Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last session, we have looked at how we can upgrade our Kubernetes cluster in EKS. So we looked at upgrading the control plane, uh, then we upgraded the node groups, and then finally we upgraded the add-ons. Now in today's session, we are going to talk about microservices. Now you should know that when we talk about containerizing an application, we are essentially talking about microservices. So before we start deploying these microservices, it's really important that we first understand what these microservices are. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So what exactly are microservices? So in simple terms, microservices are a way of designing our uh, software applications as a collection of small and independent services. Now, each of the services will run in its own process and it communicates with other services through well-defined APIs, usually over HTTP or over messaging protocols. So basically under your microservices, you will be uh, breaking down your application into smaller components and each of these components will be running in its own service. So all of this together makes up for your microservices and all of these services will be talking to each other so that your application as a whole can work as expected. So think of it like this. So instead of building one giant monolithic application where everything is tightly coupled, microservices will help you to break the application into smaller and manageable pieces. And each piece or service in this case will be responsible for a specific business function like user authentication. So you'll have one service for user authentication. You'll have one service for uh, payment processing. You'll have one service for inventory management and then so on. Now, you might be wondering, how is this different from the traditional monolithic architecture? Well, in a monolithic, all the components of an application are interconnected and deployed as a single unit. So everything that you need as part of your application, the payments, the order, the products, the cart, uh, the inventory management, everything will be tightly coupled and everything will be deployed as one big application. Now, this can make the application harder to scale, update or also maintain over a period of time. Now, with microservices, since each service is independent, you can develop, deploy and scale them separately. For example, if your payment service is experiencing high traffic, you can scale just the payment service without touching the rest of your application. And this flexibility is one of the key benefits of your microservices. So under your microservices, when we talk about your scaling, we don't have to scale the entire application. We can just concentrate on the single component which needs the scaling like the payments. Now, let's talk about some of the benefits of using microservices. So the first benefit we have is your scalability. So as I mentioned earlier, you can, um, with your microservices, you can scale individual services based on demand. And uh, this can be more efficient than scaling an entire application running as a monolith. The next benefit we have is your flexibility. So teams can work on different different services simultaneously using different technologies or programming languages if needed. So you get that flexibility as well. The next benefit we have is your fault isolation. So let's say if one service fails, it does not necessarily bring down the entire application, right? So you can isolate the service which is causing the issue and you can still run the other components of the application, which is not possible if you're running it as a monolith application. And the last benefit we have is your faster development. So smaller focused teams can develop and develops, uh, deploy services independently, which can help you to speed up your entire development lifecycle. But of course, microservices aren't a silver bullet, right? They will come with their own challenges like increased complexity in managing communication between different, different services, maintaining the consistency with your data and also maintaining a pipeline for your automated deployments. So when should you consider using microservices? So they are a great fit for large complex applications that need to scale rapidly or have multiple teams working on different features. However, for smaller projects or startups, 
a monolithic architecture might be the most practical uh, solution initially so it really depends on how complex your application is how big your application is and can you containerize your applications or not so the key to evaluate your project's requirements team structure and long-term goals before deciding um, micro whether microservices are the right, right choice or not so you'll need to evaluate all those things so there are many tech giants who have adopted microservices to power the platform for example you have netflix which uses microservices to handle everything from uh, user recommendations to video streaming. Amazon and Uber also rely on microservices to manage their massive distributed systems. So these companies have shown that microservices can enable innovation, scalability, and also resilience at a global scale. Now, let's look at an example for this. So here, I have my uh, GitHub repo and I have the code here. So I'll be sharing the link to this so you can use this if, in case you want to give it a try. So in this example, we have two microservices. So we have the uh, products service, which will be used to manage the product. And then we also have this orders service, which will fetch uh, product information from the products service. And these services will communicate over HTTP. So let's start by building the product service and you know we'll, we'll take it from there so uh, i will be running this application locally on an ec2 instance so before we can containerize this i'll just show you how uh, we can break down the application into microservices and then you know run them locally in, in my case i'm using an ec2 instance so ec2 instance is going to be my uh, local machine so here i have the ec2 instance running so i'm going to use this so let me quickly log into this so here I have the EC2 instance and if you go back to the GitHub repo, uh, you have these prerequisites that you will need to do first uh, before you can start uh, deploying these microservices. So we'll need to first install Node.js. So this code here is a Node.js application that I have. So let's begin with this. So I'm going to run this command which will help me to install the Node.js for me. This is just a deprecation warning. It's fine. This is I'm using an older version. Uh, recommended would be to go on a higher version but it should be fine in my case so this will go ahead and install the node.js for me and then uh, you can validate by running this node-v command and npm-v command just to you know confirm whether you have uh, node.js or not so node hyphen sorry that's not the right one okay so there's my node and then npm-v and there's my npm right next uh, we will basically navigate to the application so you know i'm going to clone this um uh, application and then you know we will take it from there so let me go back to this repo and uh, let me do a clone of this so let's do a git let me check if i have git on this yes i don't have it so let me quickly install so let me install git And now let me do a clone. Right, so there it is. And let's go to this. Okay, so under microservices, so there, sure, I have the orders and then I have the products. Okay, so we will start off by building the products service. So let's go to the products over here and I have the code over here. So I have the package.json and then I have the uh, server.js uh, so let's look at this server.js uh, code and uh, this is what i have here so i have a couple of products that i've defined here as an array so this is the first product where's the id the name of the product and the price and this is the second product i have now this code uses the express server with the uh, two endpoints so we have the get uh, slash products which returns a list of all the products that i have defined here and then i also have this uh, slash products slash id uh, which returns the details of a specific product if you want now uh, let's run this service and test it in the uh, browser so for this we'll exit from here and we will first run this npm install which will install all the dependencies for us um, and then we will run this npm start command so this should start my um, node.js and this is on 3001 port number so you'll have to make sure that in your security group you are allowing port uh, 3001 
you'll also need 3002 but here you can say already have it so now let's try accessing this on uh, the port so let's go here and we'll run this on port 3001 slash products and you can see I have the two products. So this is showing it in the JSON. So if you want to see in the raw data, you can see it in the raw data as well. So this is basically showing me what I have uh, defined here as an array, right? Now, likewise, if you want to see a specific product, then I can uh, give the ID here. So let's say slash one, and you can see it is giving me the um, uh, product based on the ID as well. So just, just so you understand, so if you look at this, so we have two endpoints. So we have the products and then we have the slash product slash ID. And that is what we are trying to access over here. Next, let's took a look at the orders service. So I'm gonna open this. So this is uh, uh, kind of you know running in the foreground. So I'm gonna leave it here. I'll open up another tab and let me quickly log into the instance here once again. Okay, so let me navigate to the folder. So I have the orders here. And if you look at the, again, so here I have the server.js. So let's look at the code. And um, again, so here we have two endpoints. So we have the post slash orders, which creates a new order by fetching the um, you know product details from the products service and then we have the get orders over here now this will return a list of all the orders we have so let's run this service and test it and again you can see here this uses express and you can see here it is, it is connecting to the product service on the port 3000 which is already running for us right so let's now run this service as well so we will do a npm install and then we will do a npm start and this will start running the uh, order service. So you can see the port number over here. So again, you have to make sure that in your firewall, you're allowing port number 3002. So let's try accessing this on the other port here. So let's go on port 3002 and let's try hitting this endpoint. So you can see at this point, it's not really giving me anything because we have not ordered um, any products. So now, with the services running, let's test them and we'll create an order using the orders service. Now to create your order, so here if you go back to the prerequisite, um, I have the code that um, you can use to uh, create an order, right? So here we are using a curl and we are giving a post because if you can see here in the order service that I showed you, um, let me show it over here. So we are doing a post. So we'll use a curl to send a post request and we will uh, create an order. So let me take this and uh, let me go back here. So let me log into the instance once again. So this will be 13.235.71.60. Okay, so I'm gonna do a curl and I'll need to change the IP so let me change this to the public IP okay so this will create a uh, order for me okay so let me do it once again so let's say now I want to create a product um, you know order for the second product let's go to the skin product and let's say we will keep this as five quantities so we are basically now we are creating an order using the order service so if your request is successful you should be able to um, uh, see this we will get back the order details including the total price now let's check the list of orders by visiting the url in the browser so let me go back over here so this is the orders if I hit this once again, so you can see here, there is my order. So this is for the first product where we requested two quantities. And this is the second of product where we requested for five quantities. So you, know, you can basically see the order we just created and that's it.
So here we have built two microservices that is communicating with each other. We have the products where we have the products where you can see the list of products. So you can, you know, uh, if you want more products, you can simply edit this code and uh, you can add your array, the list of products that you want. So in, in, at this point, I have only two products. And uh, service is basically where we can uh, post an order and then we can also get the list of orders that we have. So quick recap. So the product service will help you to uh, manage the product data and the order service creates orders by fetching the details from the products. Right. So that's about your introduction to your microservices. So, so like this, we can, um, you know, break down your application into smaller components and we call that as your microservices. So here we have created two microservices. One is the product microservice and the other is your order microservice. We are not deploying everything as one single application. We are rather breaking it down into smaller components and these smaller components, we call it as your microservices. That's all I have for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel for more content and please share the video with your network. If you have any feedback or any queries, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.